So, um, like I said, we're going to start with the quadratic function. Just kind of reviewing it, and even some of this is um, looks at what we talked about in the first chapter um, with the stretching and shifting and all of those kinds of things. So, when we talk about a quadratic function, it's one that's of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, uh, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a cannot equal zero. We have to have an x squared term and highest power term when we um, look at our quadratic function. Okay? Um, in general, we know that a quadratic function, when we graph it, makes a parabola. If a is um, positive, then our parabola is going to open up, right? And if it's negative, then it would open downward. Or in the last chapter, we said it would be reflected across the x-axis, okay? And then the value of a can either stretch the graph away from the x-axis or compress it towards the x-axis. Um, here in the middle, with the pink line, that's our basic graph of just x squared. The blue one is uh, 2x squared. So you see it's stretching the graph away from the x-axis. And then this green one is 1 half x squared. It's kind of compressing it back down towards the x-axis. All right, um, so we have our standard form of the equation. It says any quadratic function, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, can be rewritten in the form f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. That's what we call the standard form of the quadratic function. Notice how this relates to transformations of graphs as discussed in section 2.8. Uh, f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k is the transformation of f of x equals x squared. Um, and it's going to be h units to the right if h is greater than 0. It's going to be h units to the left if h is less than 0. And if h is less than 0, we would have what here? A plus, right? And so that goes with what we talked about in Chapter 8. Okay, it's going to be um, k units up if k is greater than 0, and k units down if k is less than 0. Okay? And... Um, I'm thinking this is stretch or compress. By a factor of A, and it's going to reflect if A is less than 0. So that's all of the things that we talked about. If we can get our function to be in this standard form, then it's going to help us solve it and also graph it um, using some of this information. Okay, questions about any of this? All right, so um, what else do we learn from the standard form of the quadratic function? Uh, of course, we already said the graph of f is a parabola. With vertex h, k. Okay, that's going to be the vertex of our graph. Um, the coordinates h, k, when it's in this form. Okay, notice that the form has built into it this minus sign. So when we have a minus there, it's h, k. If we've got plus there, then it's going to be negative h, k. Okay, the parabola is symmetric with respect to the line x equals h, called the axis of the parabola. We've already said if a is greater than 0, the parabola opens up. If it's less than 0, the parabola opens down. Okay? If a is greater than 0, k is the minimum value. 
okay? If A is greater than zero, we just said that means our graph is opening upward, right? And so our vertex is going to be here with coordinates H, K, so the minimum value would be K. Does that make sense? Okay. We'll talk about that a lot um, now, and certainly if you take elementary calculus, that's going to be really important. So when we, take, when we say that our parabola opens upward, the vertex has to be a minimum point. If the parabola opens downward, then the vertex is going to give us the maximum point. We know it's opening down if A is less than zero. Okay? All right, so we're ready for our first example. Uh, we want to find a quadratic function that has the given vertex and whose graph passes through the given point, and we're going to write it in standard form. Okay? All right, so um, we already know what standard form looks like, and I have a little strategy over here. We're going to write the formula for standard form of the quadratic equation, which is going to be um, well, not that form. The one that we just had is okay. I guess we can write it that way. F of x equals a times x minus h squared. plus k. Okay? And so uh, we're going to fill in the vertex coordinates for h and k. And so we've got a here. We've got f of x equals a times h is going to be what? Okay, we're going to write plus 3. And then k is minus 2. Very good. Okay. All right. So really what we need to know is um, what A is. We're trying to figure out what the function is that satisfies this information. Where we have a vertex of negative 3, negative 2, and it goes through the point 0, negative 8. So um, we can figure out what A is by using a particular point, a different point that satisfies this equation. And it tells us that this thing passes through 0, negative 8. So that means when x is 0, y is going to be negative 8. So we're going to do what? Okay. Okay, we would put in 0 for x. Okay. All right, so we've actually plugged in the x and y coordinates. And so now we can solve for a. Negative 8 equals 9a minus 2. Add 2 to both sides. We get negative 6 equals 9a. And divide through by 9, we get what? Negative 2 thirds. Yes? Okay. All right, so our function then is going to be f of x equals minus two-thirds times x uh, plus three squared minus two. Okay, questions about that? Um, right here we had zero plus three squared, so just three squared. Okay, other questions? All right, very good. Okay, let's look at some graphs. Um, here it says graph each function by starting with the graph of y equals x squared and using transformations. So we've got g of x equals um, x plus 1 squared minus 3. 
And so um, this is the basic graph of x squared. But what we know is that we should expect our graph to do what? Shift what kinds of ways? Okay, shift left 1 and okay, down 3. Okay, so we could take the points and walk it over. So we can go left 1. That's going to be my new vertex. Oops, I didn't go down 3. Left 1, we also have to go down 3. So this would be my new vertex. Okay. And you could do that with other points if you wanted to. Or we talked about remembering, um, you know, just how this function behaves. When we go up one unit, then from the vertex, we're going to go what? Left and right one unit, right? So if this is my vertex, I'm going to go up one, I'm going to have a point here, up one, I'm going to have a point here. Okay, if we go up two, how far do we need to go from the center? Or maybe we should go over two. If I go over two, how many points should we go up? One, two, three, four. Very good. Okay, go over two, one, two, we're going to go up, one, two, three, four. And that's enough to give us a good start on our graph. Look something like that. Okay, questions about that? Okay. All righty. Um, We've got another one, I think. Okay, and this one, what do we want to do? Or maybe we're supposed to graph our answer over here. I don't know. Let's see. I don't know. We'll use that for something, I'm sure. Okay, uh, it says let's graph the given function by writing it in standard form. Um, that's our standard form, and then we're going to use transformations to graph it. So we'll graph it up there in that spot. Okay, but here's the thing, is if they give it to us in standard form, then, you know, that's wonderful, but a lot of times they won't. So we've got to get it to the form a times x minus h squared plus k. And in order to do that, what we're going to have to use is completing the square. How many people remember that? Okay, y'all have heard of it, right? Okay, y'all just didn't raise your hands. Okay, good. So um, what we're going to do, it says, is complete the square by adding and subtracting half of the middle coefficient squared. Okay, then we're going to factor the x terms and write it in this form. So in this example, we've got y equals x squared minus 2x plus 2. <coughs> When I complete the square, I'm going to look at this middle coefficient, and I want to take half of that, which in this case is 1, and square it. So I'm going to put plus 1, and I'll just say squared for the purposes of the example. Um, but to compensate, I need to also do what? Well, normally, before we would do it on the other side, okay? But in this case, we're going to do it on the same side, and what we're going to do is subtract. So we added it and subtracted the same value on the same side, okay? And the next step then would be to factor. And this should be, you'll notice when we get to some other numbers, I'm not even going to write this number out. I'm not going to square it. I'm going to leave it as whatever it is squared because when I factor, it really should be kind of like a no-brainer. It factors as x minus 1 squared. What we did was we forced this thing to work this way. Okay, so whatever that number is that we squared, it's going to go right here. And that's how we'll complete the square. Okay, um, plus what? Well, over here on the end, we would say just 1, okay? 
questions about that? So when I get ready to graph, I'm going to do what? Okay, we're going to go right one <coughs> and up one. Very good. Okay, right one, up one. Okay. So if we go back up here to our little grid. Okay, go right one, up one. And then we'll go one, one. Uh, if we go over two, we're going to go up four. Okay. Okay, questions about that? One, two, three, this one. Okay, I went over two units and up four. One, two, three, four. Because, you know, in our basic graph, when we go over two and square it, we get four. So from the vertex to uh, the point, once I've gone over two units, it will be four. Does that make sense? Just write one up one, write one up one. You could do that. You could take as long as you found a point and moved it, you could. Like, for instance, if I wanted to look at this point on my basic graph, then I would go right one, up one. That works. Okay, you can walk it that way if you want to. That's fine. Except, you know, you might not have this drawn on the test. So, but you can always draw it. Okay. All right, other questions? Okay, very good. All right, so we did that. Okay, this one's a little different. Um, when we get ready to complete the square here, uh, we've got a leading coefficient that is not 1. It's a 3. And so we've got to deal with that. So it says what we're going to do is factor A from AX squared plus B. So... We've got y equals 3 times x squared plus 4x minus 7. Okay, I factored the coefficient from the first two terms. All right, then I'm still going to complete the square. Um, so we take half of our middle coefficient. And we square it. So half of 4 is what? 2. So I'm going to say plus 2 squared. But what's happening to that 2 squared? It's going to be what? Multiplied by 3. So really we just added in 12. Right? 3 times 4 is 12. So over here I'm going to compensate by subtracting off 12. Okay, and so now I'm ready to factor. I already did the completing the square part, so we get y equals 3 times, how does this factor? x plus 2 squared. Okay, we don't even have to think about it. If we've, if we've got the square here, the square here, this forces this thing to fit the pattern It forces it to fit that pattern, okay? And that factors as a plus b squared. Or if we had a minus in the middle, a minus b squared. So once we force this thing to do that, we just look at these two terms, and that tells us how to factor it. Does that make sense? Yeah. You don't understand how it factors? Okay. Um, do you understand that a plus b squared multiplies out like that okay so when I look at this my a value is X 
and my b in this case is 2. So I've got a squared, I've got b squared, and in the middle we have 2 times a times b. So it fits the pattern of a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Um, and so it just factors as a plus b squared. And we made it do that by kind of going backwards and saying, what does b need to be so that this is the right 2ab value? Okay, does that make any more sense? Okay, what's important is that when we do this process, when we get ready to factor, we look at this term, the last term, and it factors just like this. Okay, going from here to here shouldn't be difficult um, because that's the purpose of completing the square, to make that factoring easy. Okay, all right. So we got that, and then minus 7 minus 12 is negative 19. Okay, so this time we do what? Okay. All right, down 19, and then left 2. Very good. What would our vertex be? Just negative 2, 19. Very good. And this one, this, that's probably the better question, because in addition to going down 19 and left 2, we still have to consider multiplying by 3, which stretches the whole thing. So it's good to know exactly where that vertex is located. For the uh, h value, yes, because our standard form was y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So since this doesn't have a minus, if we were to restate it with the minus, it would be minus negative 2. So h is negative 2. The k is positive, so whatever is there would be our, I think I didn't write that. It should be negative 19. Okay. Negative 2, negative 19. Questions about that? Okay, very good. Okay, well, what'd you do first? Okay, factor out 5 or really negative 5. Okay, and so we've got x squared plus 4x. Okay, plus 13 still out here. Okay, now what? Okay, half of 4 is 2, so we're going to say plus 2 squared. Okay, and really what we just did was what? Subtract 20. So now we're going to add 20. Okay, and so this factors as x plus 2 squared plus 33. Is that right? Okay, so our vertex... Yeah, I think that's what the question asked for. The vertex is what? Negative 2, 33. Okay. All right. How many people got that right? Okay. All right, good. Questions about this? Um, the form, the standard form of the equation of the parabola, or yeah, parabola is y equals a times x minus, the minus is part of the basic form. So if we have a plus 2, we've got to restate this somehow using minus, and the equivalent would be minus negative 2. Does that make sense? And so that's why h is negative 2, but k is 33, because it was plus k. Yes. Okay. This was a negative 5. It's multiplied by this 4 that we added in. So 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. So to compensate, we had to add 20 back in. 
Well, I can't just I can't just add a number in there and say everything's okay. It has to still be equivalent to the statement above. If I don't take or add this 20 back in, these two statements are not equivalent. So I added in negative 20. So what am I going to do? I have to take it back out. Before, you would have done it to both sides, right? Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. Since we're doing everything on the same side, we added it in and we also subtracted it. Right here, I put in negative 20. And then to compensate on the same side, I took out, or well, I added 20. So we're doing it to the same side. Okay? All right, other questions? All right, very good. Okay, so that's one way to find the vertex. If we can find the vertex of the graph, then it's really pretty easy to graph from there. Just a couple of other points, maybe, and then we use symmetry to get the rest of it. So that's one way to do it. However, there's another way. Does anybody remember? This was right at the end of Math 102. Okay? All right, well, we're going to derive something. What we're going to do is complete the square in general on AX squared plus BX plus C. Okay, we're not going to put any numbers in. We're going to deal with this just the way it is to come up with, um, I don't know if we have to do it. Let's not do it. Um, they, <laughs> they have it in your textbook if you're interested. Um, but you can complete the square on f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. When you get done, um, you'll see that the vertex of the parabola is going to be minus b over 2a. And then, of course, the y value, we just plug this minus b over 2a into f. Okay, does that make sense? So... Go through your book. I was just uh, looking at it. It's on page 303 in your textbook where we'll just cheat and look at it. They actually go through and complete the square on um, AX squared plus BX plus C. And when they get right here, at the bottom, and it's in standard form, you can see that the H coordinate would be minus B over 2A. You see that? Yes? No? Okay. So that's where that, that comes from, uh, if you're interested. Okay. How are we going to use that information? Okay, it says find the vertex of 8 plus 3x minus x squared. Okay, so in this problem, a for us is what? Negative 1. Okay, b is 3, and it really doesn't matter what c is for our purposes right now. So if I want to know what the vertex is, the x coordinate of the vertex is minus b over 2a, okay, or negative 3 over 2 times negative 1. So it looks like 3 halves. x equals 3 halves. All right, to figure out what the y coordinate is, we're just going to take 3 halves and plug it into the function. Okay, f of 3 halves equals 8 plus 3 times 3 halves minus 3 halves squared, whatever that comes up to be. Okay, what is that? 32 plus 9 is 41 minus... No, that doesn't work like that. Okay, 32 plus 18 minus 9 is what? 41? 
force. Okay, so our vertex would be 3 halves, 41 fourths. Okay. Okay, once I found out what the x value or the x coordinate of the vertex was, we plugged it back into the function to figure out what the y coordinate was, or our k. Okay, and so um, I just plugged it in. We had 9 halves minus 9 fourths. And from here, you can use the calculator or, you know, kind of do it out by hand to get the 41 fourths. Questions about that? Okay, very good. All right, let's see what's next. Okay, we want to try to graph a quadratic function. And so our game plan is going to be identify A, B, and C. Okay, we're going to determine how the parabola opens. As a reminder, if A is greater than 0, it opens up. If it's less than 0, it's going to open down. Uh, we're going to find the vertex using our new shortcut. All right, and then we're going to find the x-intercepts. Remember, uh, we find the x-intercept by uh, setting f of x equal to 0 and solving. If the solutions are real, they are going to be x-intercepts. If the solutions are not real, the parabola lies above or below the x-axis. All right, remember, just let me stop and talk about that for just a second. Um, when we talk about the solutions, we'll mention this later in the chapter, that's the same thing as the x-intercepts or the zeros of a function. If we have a parabola, there are different ways that it could possibly um, interact with this x-axis. We could do it like that, and we would have how many solutions? Two, okay? It intercepts in two different places. We could do it like this, and we might have just one solution. Or the parabola could be entirely above or entirely below the x-axis, and that's when you might use quadratic formula and you get an imaginary solution. Does that make sense? Does that bring anything together? Some mysteries? Okay. All right, so uh, we'll be looking for one of these situations. We can get one solution, two solutions, or possibly no solutions uh, when it comes to these functions. All righty. Let's see what else were we saying. Okay, so we'll find the intercepts. Uh, if the solutions are not real, it lies above or below the x-axis. We're going to find the y-intercept. And we'll talk about symmetry. Um, the parabola is symmetric with respect to its axis, which goes right through the vertex. And then we're going to draw a parabola through the points found in steps 2 through 6, or 3 through 6. Okay, so let's see if we can do all of that. Okay, our function is 4x squared plus 24x uh, plus 20. So we know that A is 4, B is 24, and C is 20. Okay, just by looking at this, we know this parabola is going to open which way? Up, okay? All right, now we're ready to find our vertex. And so the vertex is going to be, we'll look at the x coordinate, x equals minus b over 2a or negative 24 over 2 times 4 gives us negative 3. Okay. To figure out what the y is, what are we going to do? Plug it back into the function, right? We're talking about f of negative 3 equals 4 times negative 3 squared plus 24 times negative 3 plus 20. 
that comes up to what? Negative 16, okay. All right, negative 16. Okay, anybody else get negative 16? Okay, all right, we got a couple of answers of negative 16. That's good. Okay, so our vertex then is negative 3, negative 16. Okay, that's our vertex. All right, the next thing we want to do is find those x-intercepts. And so we do that by setting this thing equal to 0. So we get 0 equals 4x squared plus 24x plus 20. We've got to solve this. How can we solve this? Okay, we're going to start by factoring. We can factor off a 4. Okay. And this factors is what? Very good. X plus 5, X plus 1. So now we have two more points. We've got 5, 0, and also what? I'm not, not 5, but negative 5, 0, and negative 1, 0. No. Uh, what we're applying here, all the way down, this is equal to 0. This is what's called the zero factor property. And so we have a product here, and the product is equal to zero. So the rule says if the product is equal to zero, at least one of the factors has to be zero. So we say x plus 5 equals zero, or x plus 1 equals zero. Okay. Right, because we can see. The, with the variable ones, it's kind of like you don't know exactly what they are. But with the 4, we can tell it's not a 0. Okay. Now, if we had 4x there, then we might say x equals 0. But it's just the 4, so he's fine. Okay. All right. The next thing we want to do is find the y-intercept, which we just do by plugging in 0. So we get 0 what? 20, okay. It mentions that the parabola is symmetric. I think we have enough information now to sketch our graph. Okay, let's see. Okie dokie. One, two, three. All right, so we've got some points at negative 3, negative 16. So I'm guessing these are, oh, by fives. So negative 3, negative 16 would be about right here. This is not at all to scale. Um, negative 5, 0. So one right here. Negative 1, 0. This doesn't feel like it's going. Yeah, we said opens up. Do we have anything else? 0, 20. All right, so those are the points that I have just from finding the intercepts and the vertex. Okay, uh, we know that it's symmetric right through the vertex. So I can take this point and flip it over here, right? flip it over a little bit farther here okay and so we get something that looks like that okay questions about this well that's just one of the properties of uh, the parabola it's symmetric right through that um, vertex, okay?